All right, this is lesson number two about learning JavaScript. If you missed lesson number one, you might want to watch it. The link's in the footer, or I'll put an annotation on here somewhere. We're just going to keep moving forward. So we are now into a super basic website. Have it up over here, um, and it's going to automatically reload as I enter stuff. Um, you might have to tab over and hit reload. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a script tag. And whenever I add a script tag, by default, that's going to be JavaScript straight in my page and so I'm gonna go alert and you notice sublime gives me cool nice new colors that's very nice so now if I hit save up oh, my page reloads and hit hi there every time I reload my page it's gonna say hi there so we're using the exact same code that you can use here in the console and we're now just putting it in the page I can also do console log Hi there. So that's kind of the, the use of console log is it's a way to kind of debug when stuff's breaking and you don't know what's going on. You can spit stuff out to your console and your normal user doesn't see it. Uh, but you can open your console and see there your notes to yourself as to what kind of stuff is going on. So that's kind of how you do JavaScript right there on your page. And let's go ahead and load up what's called jQuery. If you go to jQuery.com, jQuery is what's called a library, and it gives you some great ways to uh, do stuff very, very easily. And actually, we're going to go to code.jQuery.com because we just want to get the actual code. And you can click on minified, and there we go. I just want the link right there. I'm going to copy the link. And right down here in the bottom of my page, oh, We'll just go and add script and source equals and then paste that link you got there. Awesome. So now jQuery is going to load in onto my page. Hit refresh. You don't notice anything because jQuery doesn't actually do anything. It just gives you a bunch of predefined variables. Remember we talked about variables and commands. Uh, kind of gives you a bunch of predefined things that you can use. So here I'm going to make my own script after jQuery because we want to make sure we're doing this after jQuery. Uh, otherwise, jQuery won't be loaded yet. And uh, now you can do some things like jQuery sign is the dollar sign. This is basically the main function you get. I can go jQuery. Dot, I can go jQuery, and I'm going to look for the tag of header. And these are just like CSS selectors. That's the beauty of jQuery. I'm going to go header h1 dot html and I'm going to change the html of header h1 One, once again this looks just like css doesn't it that's why everybody loves jQuery um, and I'm going to go my awesome site I'm going to hit save and you'll notice it starts off at my site and then instantly goes blip my awesome site so now we are real time changing stuff in jQuery which is or, or in using JavaScript Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ul li. I'm going to go same thing, milk eggs. And I'll just leave that there. So ul, uh, I made that a ui, didn't I? Whoops. ul li, let's try doing something else. Let's go um, ul. That'll just find an element, just like CSS again. And I'm going to do append. Append means we're going to add another thing in there. Uh, veggies. And I'm just going to put some straight HTML code in there. So UL, it's now going to add an LI to my UL with veggies. So there you go. Milk, eggs, and now veggies is in there even though it's not in the code. I'm going to copy and paste this. Now we got a lot of veggies. So you can add a whole lot of things. This is kind of where it the web, like I said, really starts getting fun because now you're changing your web page real time. I can also come over here. This will be a lot more fun. Let's do it like this. Let's do it in the console. Nice. And so then I can go, I'm going to go, let's clean this thing out. UL, HTML, and let's just give it a single LI. When you hit HTML, it's going to completely... It's going to completely wipe out what's in there and it's going to give it all new stuff so there we go now I completely wiped out my HTML 
Um, or you can, and I added an li in there. So now we're real time starting to mess with our stuff. Um, instead of append, let's say I wanted to add something before milk, then you can do this, ul prepend. Now eggs showed up before milk, because a prepend is basically going to do it at the very beginning of my element. Upend is going to go at the very end. Um, gosh, there's some other things. And the other great thing about jQuery is it just all makes sense. If I go ULLI and just hit enter down here, then you'll notice it gives me an array of all my elements. I can go ULLI EQ, and this is going to get an it's going to get an index. So EQ zero. So I'm just getting the zero index of that. If you guys remember from doing JavaScript, EQ one is milk. So I can go LIEQ one dot remove, and it's gone. Then I can go LIEQ zero remove, and it's gone. So that's kind of the super basics of how you're going to use jQuery to start changing all sorts of stuff in your website. Let's uh, let's add a link. And let's make a link do something smart. Um, I'm going to make this href equal pound, because we're not going to go anywhere with this. This is just going to be a link. Actually, I'll just do a button. Um, this button will be id add one. So there's a button that says add one. It does absolutely nothing. So now what you can do with jQuery, though, as you can go, let's grab add one. I'm going to go dot click. And this is the one thing you'll have to remember here, function. And then this syntax just feels really weird. So you're doing click and then you're typing function, open close, brackets. Uh, this is probably one of the weirder things if you're brand new. It's like, oh man, this looks crazy and confusing. You just memorize it and then you're done with it. So type it out 10 times in a row to force yourself to memorize it, and you're going to be okay. Now whatever you add in here is going to happen whenever the function, whenever it gets clicked. So whenever I click on add one, it's going to do all this fun stuff. So if that makes sense. Um, and then I'm going to space it so it's clear. So now when I click this, it's actually going to add a whole lot of veggies. Let me just do it where it does it once. So now every time I do this, it's going to add a row of veggies. Don't know why I did that sound. Uh, let's make this get even smarter if I'm not going too fast for you. I'd rather go too fast so you feel like you're drowning and then all of a sudden you wake up and realize, wow, I know quite a bit of JavaScript already. You can always rewatch the video. So I'm going to do an input, which is a, let me give this one an ID. You'll see what an input is here soon. Name. I'll just call it ID equals name. So that's what an input is. It's You've seen them in forms all over the place. They allow you to input stuff. We didn't talk about them before because we didn't have JavaScript to do anything smart with them. So I had an input named name with an ID of name and the button add one. So when add one clicks, let's do this. Let's go, we're going to go there val u equals dot val and dot val gets the value of name it'll get the value of any input so here let me do this watch um let me delete this and then i'm going to go alert value so now it's, let me type in whatever here ah alert test so now i've grabbed my value out of name, remember because my ID is name here, so whenever I click on add one, then it's going to say value equals names value, and I'm going to alert it. Or if you want, you can console log it. Now it's going to appear in my console. So that's kind of how that's going to work. So I've, I've grabbed my value out, and now I'm going to go ul, 
append. And here's where, where I'm going to do a string. Let me show you real quick about, so I want to go li, and I want the value to be in here. And this will not work. This will just say value, value, value. Great, it's actually putting a string of value. I want it to get that in there. Let me come over here and show you how you insert different strings together. Um, if I go name plus value, well now it says name value. So I can actually go name space plus value. And that's kind of how you can add two strings together into one. What happens if I go name plus 20? So now I'm adding a string plus a number. JavaScript is smart enough to say, okay, treat the number as a string, because clearly you can't add name to 20. So that's kind of how you add stuff together. So I'm going to do li, and then I'm going to go plus, and I'm going to go and ending li. So I've got a string. We're going to add in the string. We're going to add it to our other string. So now let's give this guy a try. So now I go veggies, and I get add one. Ha! Boom. I feel like we're doing real programming here. This is awesome. And let's pick up some friends at the store, because who wants to go shopping with friends? I do, I do. So that's kind of your very, 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 very basics of using jQuery. I don't know if you can see, but jQuery kind of makes it pretty easy. This is the most complicated bit of jargon we had to memorize that actually feels like code. Function, open, close, what the heck does that do? Um, and, yeah, I'll get into functions here before I let you go for today. Let's go back to our console real quick. Let's say jQuery is all good and all. Let's describe this so you understand what that means. I'm going to actually, we know that we can, descri we can do variable name equals 30. Uh, age equals 30. And now name's defined, so I'm going to name equals will. So I want to do a function that alerts both of these. or I want, to, I want to do something that's reusable. Those are called functions. When we do alert, that's just a function that does something. So I can go function alert name. And remember I told you there's about six types in JavaScript? Well, here's your next type. It's called function alert name. And that's, you notice that looks pretty similar. Function alert name. And this is going to go alert name. So now I just go alert name. There you go, and it's always going to alert the name. Well, let's say I want it to do something a little smarter than that. Plus, let's call this alert name plus age. Let me add a space there. There you go. Now this is going to alert name plus age. So now I go alert Oh, it already knows that it exists. Will 30. So now I'm kind of defining this thing that does something for me. Um, and so that's what's going on here is when you, the actual official JavaScript click is that. But then it needs to know, what do I do when you click? I need to do something. So we're creating what's called an anonymous function. We're creating a function right now with no name to it. I mean, you can give it a name. Um add value. You can use the exact same thing we are using here, function alert name add value, and that's what we're doing. We're just creating a function and we're saying do this stuff right now. This name is completely pointless because you're never going to call it again, um, but this works. There you go. And then this works. Uh, and so that's kind of a little explanation of why we added that. We're creating a function, and we're giving it some functionality. Uh, one other thing, and this is the last thing, since you've got a lot to learn and you probably want to go have some fun. Last thing with functions that you can do is you can give them arguments. Remember, if you do alert, well, it's just going to do a blank alert, and then you can give it something to alert. You can give it your argument of 30. Or I can say name, age equals 30. Yeah, I can give it an argument. How do we do that? Well, you just go function.
I'll just go alert this plus 10. And then I'll say, I'm giving it a variable name here. I want you to give me, I'm just going to call it the thing. And then we're just going to go alert the thing plus 10. So now, whatever we pass it is going to be referenced as the thing whenever we're inside the function. This is going to kind of be what bends your brain a little bit. Show you how this works. Alert this plus 10, and I'm going to just say 10 or 20. It's going to alert 30. Why is it doing that? Because I said alert this plus 10, and I gave it 20. So now the function fires, the function alert this plus 10 fires, and it calls the thing equals 20. It kind of creates that variable for us. So then it's going to alert 20 plus 10, because we gave it 20 and called it the thing. You can call that whatever you want. I'll call it val for value. Val is kind of something developers will say a lot. So I can go val plus 10. Now I say alert this plus 10, 20. Yeah, exact same thing. It doesn't care what you call this. Um, it just knows that whatever the first thing you give it is going to be called val. You can actually do several things together. Add these together. Val1, val2. Alert val1 plus val2. That's what it's going to do. And what did I type wrong? Oh, I didn't spell function right. There we go. Fusion. Okay, so now if I go add these together. There we go. I still get 30. 10, 30. Now I got 40. Because it doesn't, it doesn't care what those two things are. This function just goes take val1, take val2, add them together, and alert them. So that's kind of functions, and I'm definitely going to leave you there because I hit you with way too much. This should have been two lessons, but oh well, please forgive me. Have some fun with jQuery, write a couple functions, annoy your friends with a million alerts, and have an awesome day.